Well, Zartan isn't a happy chap, is he? I'm sure I left workers here. As my workers' efficiency is only 80%, I know something's wrong. Under the Labour Economy panel, I can see all of my settlements and how much labour I have in each. It seems I've run out of labour because new intake wasn't on. My home region of the blasted waste is overflowing with eager workforce. Let, let's do some shuffling around and get Blackwater back up and running. It's always a good idea to come back to this panel often, especially when you've got a big empire. Too many lazing layabout labourers will cause constant control concerns. So use them, misuse them, spend them on fast building, but make sure you don't have a great excess of them. With, with that in mind, I'll turn off intake for a few of my more supplied regions. That way, new labour goes where it's needed most. Now, you see, I'm not saying I hate my lesser downkin, but if they were all out of the way, I would certainly hate them less. Just imagine, factories as far as the eye can see, mines in every mountain. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's take a quick gander at my current empire. Overall, I've gone for a very mine-heavy infrastructure, meaning I've built way more outposts than factories and I've only built two towers as I didn't want to split my raw material spending too wide. But now I want to start using that raw material and have it turned into armaments. This means building factories. Lots of factories. Our totally not evil plan to build a massive drill is going well. I built the second stage. I do have enough raw material for the third stage, but there's still a few things I want before I build it mainly the Temple of Asut. While my workforce keep working their little fingers to the bone, we need to infuse the drill with some magical artefacts. I have one from a roaming dwarf army that's strayed a little too close to me. They are now willing workers in my mines. As for the next three, we have several options. There are two types of relic, lesser and major. You can attach any combination of four to the drill, but you could also use them for your own personal gains. You can see each one has different perks, and if you didn't guess, major relics give you more than lesser relics. You need to attach four to the drill to complete the quest, but you can get them all if you wish. As for me, I don't really fancy a sea voyage at this time, so Scavor's relic is out. Thungui is quite close and held by some nasty ogres. I could then push north up to the ancestral relic of Valia. Getting this one will prevent the champions of more from showing up in my final battle. As it happens, Zartan is right by Castle Dragonoff doing some raiding, so that's an easy win. I could then take a little jaunt to the west to claim the major ancestor relic of Rundi, meaning I won't have to fight the dwarfs of the Grey Mountains. Yeah, you know what, I think that's the game plan. So it's time to stake my claim on the vamps and get my second relic. I tell you, who needs a battering ram when you have a skullcracker? Zartan loves getting his axe messy, so he will charge headlong into the defenders on the wall, while Pitak will cause as much damage as possible with spells. I'll have my bull centaurs and infernal lion sworn use the breach in the wall, which I have for completing the first military tier to the Tower of Zar. They will start capping points in causing just general mayhem. Time to move my army up, ready for when the Skullcracker breaks down the gate. That was fast. In you go, lads.
rest is simple. Flood the city with troops, capture the points, wipe out any form of resistance, and it's game over for the vamps. To get the relic, we need to occupy the settlement. Now, I'm gonna turn it into a factory, but I have always wondered, how good are zombies at mining? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Factory, definitely the right choice. I'll take the relic and turn all of Sylvania from a vampiric hellscape to an industrial hellscape. I may as well upgrade it to a level three factory while we're here. Yeah, don't think I don't see you there, Wagner. Karak Kadin would be an easy target for him, and as it's one of my few high level factories, I don't really want to lose it, but I have a little trick I can utilize as the Chaos Dwarfs. All I need is money, labor, and a lack of conscience. I will build the guardhouse, then with my excess workforce I will instantly build it, rinse and repeat. Now that should stand against Pointy Tooth and his merry band of brainless followers. Our second Lord, Zul, has been gleefully burning the Eastner Blast, providing us with a ton of labour and raw materials. I may move him south to help Zartan, but for now, he can continue to sack settlements and bring in more labour. They're not the strongest army, but the look on their little faces they burn settlements to the ground really warms the heart. And finally, I can introduce our newest army, commanded by the one, the only, Draken, Draken, Draken hum in here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I think Mr. Ballbreaker will do. He will be marching north to claim the relics held by the ogres. Off you go on your Ooh, merry stars. way. And with that, we can end turn. Hmm. Looks like Wagner wasn't quite put off by our garrison. Thankfully, we put ourselves in a position where if we sally out and meet him, we should be able to take him on. Good timing too, as it looks like Manfred was on his way to lend a bit of backup. I will bet all the workers in my minds that they will move on Castle Drakenhof the instant I move on. I'll move Zartan off using the underways to prevent attrition, build a guardhouse, and see what they do. I'll use the same trick as before and move some labour around. I'll need about 600 labour to get to tier 2, and if the vampires do decide to attack, that should give me a good chance of holding the city. Zul, make your way towards Prague. We should hopefully find lots of willing workers there. Mr. Ballbreaker, head towards the Mountains of Morn. I can now build the Temple of the Sut. Ooh, 10 turns is a long time. I may spend some labour to quicken that up, but not this turn. Zartan takes the tower with a decisive victory, giving me another factory. Ballbreaker will enter the mountains in Zul. Prague is on the horizon. Right, yeah, here we go. We've been attacked by... Ostland? Valiant defeat? Oh, come on. Well, you win some, you lose some. Zartan, back you go. Well, that's disappointing. A much easier fight than I hoped for. Let's just also resolve this one. Should I turn Prague into a factory? Yes. Yes, I should. More factory means more armaments. And high quotas will work really nicely here. Ballbreaker keeps going north, crossing into Ogre territory. And I think I'll start on the drill now, as it may take several turns. I will also turn intake back on for the blasted waste and quickly build the temple. 
It puts my overall efficiency down a little, but it's easily sorted. We can send out a convoy to get some more labourers. It's like playing whack-a-mole. Having taken Zartan out of the tower, the vamps have now taken that too. I think the Empire and Vampire Cats have this strange alliance going on that I don't know about. Ah, oh, they only sacked it. Let's go ahead and take back Carcass of Drakenhof, and then time to clear out this area. Zul, you can head south by Kislev and attack the Drakenhof Conclave from the north. Mr. Ballbreaker, kill those ogres and get our third relic. Let's do some quick mopping up. DJ, give me some music. was an ordeal. We won, we lost, we loved, we stabbed vampires through their hearts. Several turns later I have secured Sylvania and crippled Ostland. Mr Ballbreak has been killing ogres but he has taken a bit of a beating of his own. Time to pull him back and regroup. Now Zartan and Zul have pacified this area, Zartan can march south to claim the major ancestor relic of Grundy and Zul can head over and continue claiming Ostland. And when Mr. Ballbreaker is back up to full strength, he can start raiding Ogrelands again. Before we jump into this battle, let's take our army from a 10 to an 11. The reason why I wanted to pump out so many armaments is so I can give my troops the most amount of buffs possible. The more buffs I give, the greater my armament upkeep will be. And this is multiplied by the amount of that certain unit I have across all my armies. Now you can see why I need a very healthy armament production line. And with that, my troops are buffed up and ready to go. Well, this doesn't look too difficult, but you know there'll be reinforcements. Dowie folk do like their catapults and other things that go boom. I'm gonna try a wide checkerboard formation with the bull centaurs on the flank. Zartan, Pituk, you know what to do. worked out better than I thought. The ball centers can mop up some of the stragglers. All right, here's the real force. I need to take out those catapults as soon as I can. Oh, and gyrocopters. Zartan can deal with them while Pitta can start destroying the catapults. I'll just wait for them to fall behind the rest of the army before I move in. <laughs>
And there we go. Pituk took a little beating, but not too bad. And with that, my collection of relics is done. We have reached our gold. Now we have our final battle. But you may notice, I have a fifth relic. I secretly sent Mr. Ballbreaker up to the ancestral relic of Valia. As Zartan likes being in the fight, I thought I'd give him a shiny new ability to help him put those Dowie in their place. All that's left now is to jump into this final battle. <laughs>